But don't make fun of me because I'm not a good dancer, all right? But it's all about the experience. <laughs> <laughs> I see you bust a move. Uh, we're probably on the same level. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I watched all of it. I have to say, man, maybe it's like what's happening with my family at this very point in my life and how I, I recently started reflecting on Chosen Family and my like queer circle of friends. But this show hit me hard and uh, it's really special. So thanks for doing it. Thank you very um, much. Yeah. So that first, but second of all, I have to say, so I'm watching the show, obviously very queer. I've known your career for a while. I thought I knew you until like I started writing all these questions last night as if you were queer. And then I dug a little deeper. <laughs> erase, 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 erase. Do you get that? Do you get that a lot? Am I the first one to assume? Like, I, I think that, you know, the people I run around with, people make some assumptions, but you know, we're all doing the best we can. <laughs> I blame COVID. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Oh, man. I mean, it must have something to do with your immersion in queer culture. I mean, you seem to be surrounded by queer people in your real life, but also yeah. in the show. Is the show a reflection of your real world um, queer chosen family? Oh, yeah, most definitely. You know, one of the, you know, Murray Hill, who plays Fred Rococo, is, you know, one of my closest friends. And we've known each other for like 20 years. And he he was like the first person to give me a job, you know, to give me stage time and was so supportive. And, you know, I started meeting people like Murray in New York and I, and I suddenly felt like seen and like, and, and encouraged to be more of myself. So I feel, uh, saved and rescued by the queer community. So I definitely <laughs> want them to be a part of the show because that's, that's who I think I would be looking for, you know, yeah. if I was him. As, I mean, so you're a big part of the show, you're a producer on it. How did that become, um, or why, I guess, did that become a part of this show? How and why? How, which part? The, um... Well, how did, how did it translate, I guess, your sort of queer, um, your chosen family, your, your queer circle, how did that translate into, the, into somebody somewhere? Well, you know, Paul and Hannah, the showrunners, pitched, uh, you know, this, this world and the idea and the choir practice and all that. And had had you know the character of Joel and had the character of Fred Rococo and you know they they know that I'm friends with Murray so that was nice you know it also helped sell the the concept for me I was like oh well my buddy can be in the show this is this is it you know but I think that's the thing when you live in a small town like and you don't feel like you fit in you have to find your chosen family anywhere you, I mean anywhere we all look for our chosen family right but for me thinking about what that might look like in Kansas is uh was really interesting and I'm like I I just know that if I still lived in Kansas I would have found people I mean there's only one Murray Hill there's only one Frederick Coco but I would find people like that you know that's just always been where I felt the most at home yeah what was it like growing up for you um I mean you you were in Kansas right yeah you, yeah yeah you ended up in Maine right I think you spent I spent summers in Maine at like this sort of dirty dancing kind of resort and, you know, would sing at night and like wait tables during the day. And I went to school in Arizona, so I'd be there during the year. And then I finally moved to New York and left both of those behind. But, um, you know, it's it, it, for me, like high school and growing up, I had a lot of friends, but I, I didn't always feel like seen by anybody. I felt like, I think, you know, every teenager goes through that, but, but I, I was always like, I had a foul mouth, I was dirty. I always got in trouble with my teachers for like saying raunchy shit. I mean, even from the time I was like a little kid, like I just always was like that and like always getting reprimanded for it, but also it made my friends laugh, you know? And so I just stuck, it's just, it's a part of me. Like I can't, I can't just wash the, the dirty songs out of my mouth cause they're there. It's, it's who I am. <laughs> and so when I finally got to and when I got to New York, and I remember doing this show with Murray, and, um, you know, we had this song called Can Hole, which is about butt sex, and I sang that, and, like, and like the response that we got, and, like, I was like, oh, my God, people think this stupid shit is funny. Like, I was like, these are my people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got, you really got your start in gay bars, right? Um, in yeah, you know, uh, a lot of doing a lot of Murray shows, gay bars, you know, definitely the, you know, uh, it feels like queer culture is always on the cutting edge. They always sort of like, 
you know, queer culture usually identifies what's next and what's new and encourages you to be yourself, you know, and the only way you're ever going to succeed and have an original voice is if you're wholly and truly yourself. And that's, that's what I felt like I was getting and I needed. Yeah, it must've, I was going to say, it must've really felt at the time as you're sort of, you're sort of building a career, like a real esteem booster for you um, to feel like, oh, okay, these people, these people believe that I can do this. So I yeah, because I, 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 I struggled with uh, self worth and all those things, you know, growing up and low self esteem. And even though I had a lot of friends, I just didn't feel like special or whatever. And I felt special when I got to the gay bars and the gay clubs and, and, and also encouraged to push it even further. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Um, That's not, the reason I am the way I am is because of because of those days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's paid off. You get to sing in the show. You get to act. There's a bunch of queers. You get to do Zumba. Um, this is basically this feels like what you were born to do. Am I right? I mean, I hope so. I feel like I wouldn't have been able to do it until this exact point in my life. I would have been too nervous or not comfortable in my skin. But because I got to be such a part of the whole process, I felt really at home in it and I didn't let myself get in my own way. And I felt not just like uh, a part of it, but I felt celebrated. You know, I felt like, um, and we try to make everybody feel like that on set, but just, you know, we felt like we were doing something a little bit different and let's just be ourselves and uh, cut loose and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's really moving. It's very funny. It reminds me, and I know this is not gonna be the first time you're gonna hear this comparison. So, uh, forgive me, but it gives me Schitt's Creek, Schitt's Creek's vibes, which is obviously a huge compliment to the show. Well, thank you. I actually have not, uh, have not heard that before. So I will take that. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be one of the best shows of next year. I'm very excited to see how people respond to it. Chris, uh, yeah, just, no, I know. I'm just hoping for a season two, you know, let's, if we get an audience on top of that, thank you know, you, I, wish you, I wish you could have seen me here. I mean, I was watching this alone last night, eating a turkey sandwich and just like blubbering into the turkey oh, sandwich. Okay. I mean, <laughs> it's very, very moving, Bridget. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyways, back to, I, I'm curious, um, you know, your career trajectory is so interesting. We could spend an hour probably dissecting it. Um, so I think I'm also very excited for this to feel, it feels like a big, uh, moment in your career. I'm not sure if it feels like that to you, but I wonder, do you feel like Hollywood has had a hard, hard time figuring out what to do with you, where to put you? Yeah, most definitely. And you know, it's, it's not their job, you know, like I'm lucky to be in this position. Like I'm lucky that HBO wanted to take a chance on me and HBO has been super supportive um, and patient and helpful. Like they were super involved in this show and really, gave us lots of feedback and notes and things. And it was all, it's all tour. It, it all made it, you know, better, but, um, it's hard for me to not, you know, get emotional. Like when we're even like when we're just watching edits and, and the HBO logo comes on and the sound and the, you know, it's like, I grew up like thinking HBO was the shit and now I'm going to be on HBO and now I'm not, not just on HBO, but I'm like, in my own show and like you can't i can't really stop and think about it that way because it's too much and i'll just i'll be the one crying into my turkey sandwich you know <laughs> but um we can but, do uh, it sometime call me <laughs> <laughs> believe me i've cried into all kinds of different things i'm you know but um yeah it's uh it definitely feels like uh something i've been working not even working towards it just happened i i, I would never have had the the I never, I would never have it in me to dream this big because I would just never think that something like this could happen to me. So um, right now I'm just like one day at a time taking it, you know, hoping that some people find it and like it and watch it and anything else that happens beyond that is a blessing. Oh, um, I kept thinking while I was watching it, you know, this year, you're on cloud nine because of HBO and I'm just like, man, she has come a long way since Joseph and the amazing Technicolor dream. <laughs> Look at, look at her go. <laughs> Believe me. I remember like, <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. Yeah, I, I, you know, we did this like, yeah, in Maine at that resort, Quisasana, where I worked for many summers. Like, you know, we did a female, well, I don't know if you know about this, because like I sang 
No, no, no. It was Joseph. I get all my musicals mixed up. I'm, but uh, yeah, but I was singing that, that those Canaan days, those Canaan days you used to know. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm, I felt like such a star. I didn't know that I could go further. I didn't know that life would get better from there, but it did. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah, you think like, it's just, you're, when you're living in the moment, you're just living in the moment. It's hard to look forward yeah. to what's next. Yeah, yeah. And you look at the call sheet and you're like, oh my God, I, I got the... I get to be, I get to sing those candy days. And you're like, this is, this is the best moment of my life. And I mean, at the time, was, like Joseph yeah. and the amazing technical dream coat was going to be the most exciting thing you were going to do in your life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess uh, I didn't realize that things might get just a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, a lot better. Oh, uh, I, uh, I, I uh, wonder, you know, going, going back to Kansas, like what was your introduction to the queer community? Did you have, queer friends when you were in school? Did you know a lot of queer people? Well, I mean, this is dumb, but my like two, my two favorite cousins were both gay. <laughs> and, um, and my oldest sister, Britton, who um, has since passed away, like, I remember her and my cousin Bruce, like, you know, we'd be at a, a big family event and they would sort of take me under their wing. And I always just, I still do. I still love my cousin Bruce. He's great. He plays like every Friday night, he goes and plays the piano at a nursing home. He's like a great guy and like super sweet. And he, he was fabulous. He worked for like Ralph Lauren and all these things. But, um, but you know, I, I didn't have like a lot of queer friends in, in high school and, you know, in college. Yes. I mean, there were some, but now like I have found the queer people in my hometown. So when I go home, you know, I, I see them or I see my friend Davis. Well, that, that sounds gross, but I mean, it's, it just wasn't like a thing, you know, like when I moved to New York, I, that's when I found all my, all my people, all my friends, you know, like all my queer friends, it was just like the community I was looking for and waiting for. And I know that there were friends of mine that have since come out of the closet, but in Kansas, it wasn't like in the eighties, it wasn't like people were it just, Sadly, it just wasn't as easy as it is now. And maybe yeah. it's not easy now. I don't know. I don't know the right answer. I, you, please just edit some of this out because I sound like a real ding dong, but you know, I, my heart's in the right place. That's all, that in my mind is all accurate. I mean, as a gay person, I can say that I grew up in Michigan. <laughs> I live in Michigan um, and you know, where I grew up, it was very different than it is now. I can't imagine like coming out. I feel like there would be the freedom to I was going to say label it differently, but not even label it at all if I didn't want yeah. to. I mean, so much has changed considerably. Um, so, so anyway, I don't, no editing needed. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, I, uh, how, so, you know, I guess when it comes to the family dynamic um, in this series, how close uh, to your life is is the series well we tried to make the character of my mom like my mom who is like but you you can't even believe she's real because she's so larger than life like wild like i i don't even know how to describe her we tried to make the character work and it's just like no every time like it, it you know it just seemed like a clown i'm like we can't do this and then the dad you know i didn't have a close relationship with my dad at all and i have a close relationship with my dad in the show but but the the part of the the sister like the dead sister was something that like it was really um it was really great for me because i didn't like many M midwesterners or many people from kansas i dealt with my grief in a very solitary sort of uh bottled up way and this show has been a nice way for me to to grieve her and to and to sort of there are things that happen with my sister and i that are in the show that feel really hard but great to and lovely to touch on and like a, a little bit of a uh a um closure you know yeah. and yeah. um and an honor an honor to her to, to honoring her so you know the it just it was a little combo of both and and also like the dream of having that kind of relationship with a dad like my friends two of my good friends from growing up had these like loving adoring fathers <laughs> and i just always be like just, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what's that like? And, and my brother is like, he's a great dad to his kids. And I just, you know, so it was like that part was getting like to play make-believe and that was equally as meaningful. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that for sure. Um, <laughs> manifesting something that 
doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Was your sister then, your sister who passed away in real life, um, mm -hmm. do you say that she was queer or gay or lesbian? No, no, she was, but it was just her and my, my, my cousin Bruce, they were like, you know, that was like, they just had a really great kinship, which is sort of like, ended up being like, something I longed for, you know, I longed for like that relationship that the two of them had, you know, he was just so, they were just so joyous together. Right. And like, and I, and I just always wanted to have a friend like that. So I guess I, I found that eventually. <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, well, um, I, I mean it with the show, it's really, it's really extraordinary. I can't wait to share it with my mom. Um, oh, thank it, you. Yeah, it feels like one of those shows that I'm very close to her. It feels like one of those shows you watch with somebody you care about. Um, so thank that's, you. What, that's what I'm going to do next. Uh, so I, I, it's so lovely to meet you in this virtual world. And hopefully uh, we, we get to cross paths in real life someday. So I'll see you on the dance floor somewhere. You know, you uh, never know where. <laughs> yes. Um, all right, Bridget. Well, uh, that's but don't make fun of me because I'm not a good dancer, all right? But it's all about the experience. <laughs> <laughs> I see you must have moved. Uh, we're probably on the same level. Yeah, basically. <laughs> oh, well, right. thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. You got it. Right. Take care of yourself. Thanks so you much. Too. Okay. Bye. Bye.